Hello, welcome to 1.5, Chapter 1, Section 5, Postulates and Theorems. These are some of the bedrock postulates and theorems that you need to know for geometry. For the notes today, you will want a straight edge. All right, Roman numeral 1, postulates. We're going to learn a couple important ones. Minimum points postulate says a line has a minimum of two points. So if you have two points, there's only one line that will go through them. But it must have at least two points or you won't know which direction it's supposed to be going. So your number five minimum points postulate says if you have two points, there is only one line going through them. Okay, part two, a plane. A plane has a minimum of three points, and these points must be non-collinear, means not in a line. Basically, if three points A, B, and C, then it, there's only one possible plane that they can all fit in. Think of it like three points floating in space. They can only have one piece of paper that they're attached to. So we're going to draw a plane here. If those are all sitting in that one plane, you can tell that there's no other way that plane could rotate and still contain all the points. So this part of the postulate says, if you have three non-collinear points, they are, and the word is contained, they are contained in a unique plane. Contained is just like it means in English. Contained, it's inside. But unique means no other planes are possible. Only one plane is possible. So this could have been written as one unique line going through them. This could be written one plane can contain them. All right, and number three, a space. A space has a minimum of four points, and they must be non-coplanar, which means not sitting in the same plane. This part of the postulate says, if you have four non-coplanar points, They, and we can say reside, reside is the same thing as contained in, reside in one unique space. So four non-complainer points. So in this drawing, um, this is a three-dimensional drawing. This axis is coming towards you. That's usually the X. That's the Y. That's the Z. So you have one point here at four, one point here at three. And because this third one is two, the Z is up two. So we have one, two, we have two, three, four, and then we have this little winner here. And when it says they can reside in only one space, that means we can only draw one rectangular prism to contain them. So you go up to, up to, connect it to the side, up to, up to, oh, sorry, I'm off the thing. Um, up to, up to, connect the top in the front, up to, up to, connect the tops, 
and then you just connect the corners. Again, that was off the screen. If you need to pause it to draw the figure, please do so. If you're ready to go on, flip the page. All right, this is postulates six, seven, and eight, all three separate. And these are kind of the reverse of the first ones. Um, this was postulate, postulate five is minimum points postulate. Six to eight are the any points postulate. Through any two points, there is exactly one line. So in this figure, if we look at points F and W, so points F and W, only one line can contain them, and that is the line FW. Okay, postulate number seven. Through any three points, there is exactly one plane. This is why these are called the any postulates. It's through any. And so as you can see, if you use F, Y, and W, there's only one plane that those three things can be sitting in. We would say that points F, Y, and W, are in plane and see the name of the plane it's italicized this I don't see very often I more often see the capital R resting in the corner that way so that's not something you're gonna see you're gonna see it on the plane this is plane capital R okay postulate number eight for any two points in a plane their line is also in the plane. Okay, so if we look at B and W, we can see that points B and W are in plane R. B and W sit in plane R. This um, any points postulate says that the line BW is also in plane R. So these are your any points postulates. All right, postulate number nine, the intersecting planes postulate. If two planes intersect, their intersection is a line. So here you have a vertical plane and a horizontal plane, and the seam where they intersect here definitely a line. So we would say plane P, that's its name, and plane Q, that's its name, intersect in, we're going to say line AB, because this line has two points. Okay, so intersecting planes postulate. What about in this situation? Uh, plane, and we're going to do the side plane here. When you name a plane like this that doesn't have really a, a name in the corner, you have to name it with three points on the plane. So I'm just going to pick F, B, and H. So plane F, B, H, and plane, and I'm going to use the bottom one now, this one here. So I'm going to use three letters, G, H, D. These two planes intersect in... And the line they intersect in is right there. So it's line HD, put the little line marking over it. So in a cube, you have lots of planes that intersect in lots of lines. There's one of those on your worksheet that you need to be able to do. So refer to this if you get stuck. Okay, so those were postulates. Now we're gonna do some theorems. Remember that postulates, um, do not have to be proved, theorems do. So these are things that were argued about and proven before they were allowed to become theorems. 
Here's the first one, one, one. Now, sometimes that your textbook will give these numbers. These numbers are totally meaningless. Every book will have a different number. In another book, this might be 2-5. So we don't pay a really close attention to the, the numbers because they, they don't really tell us much. Really, um, most theorems don't have titles either. They are simply a statement. Sometimes on your notes, I will put the summary of what it is in parentheses and italicized to show you that's not an actual title. That's just a little descriptor. So if you have to state this theorem, you have to actually say the words. You can't give this. Now that's different from like ruler postulate. Ruler postulate has the name ruler postulate. So you don't have to state the entire postulate. These three on this page, you do have to actually state the entire thing. And that's just how it goes. So one one says, if two lines intersect, then they intersect in exactly one point. So these are kind of tiny, but you've got line AB, which is this one. We would say AB intersects. So I'm going to put blue arrows on here so you can tell which one I'm talking about. Line AB intersects, and then this one is DC. So line DC at point P, and this is point P. So that's all this is saying. If two lines intersect, they intersect at a point. That's our first theorem. Okay, now our second theorem. This is about a line and a point are in one plane. Given line AB, here it is, and point C, which is not on the line, see it's outside, then only one plane called M, there's its title, contains them both. So if you have a point and a line and the point isn't on the line, only one plane will hold them both. If you think of it like a piece of paper, only one piece of paper will touch both the line and the dot. The piece of paper is the plane. Planes are like paper. They have area but not thickness. All right, third one, one, three. Given two intersecting lines, then they lie in only one plane. So let's call this plane N, and I'm going to use um, italicized names for the lines. This one here is italicized G. We just use cursive. This one here is italicized H, and they intersect at point Q, which is right there. So to restate this in terms of the figure that we see, we would say lines G and H intersect at point Q and lie in plane N. Any two intersecting lines can be contained in only one plane. Again, think of a piece of paper. If you have two intersecting lines, you can only fit those lines on one flat piece of paper. There isn't another way to put them on a piece of paper. It has to only be the one. And that's all this is saying is it's only one plane. All right, that is the end of the notes. Again, you might want to review the notes before you start the homework so that it's fresh in your mind when you're working on your homework. Have a good afternoon.